Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, greetings. Not just a greeting. This is a many greetings. Happy Thanksgiving. May it continue. Uh, uh, the holidays to come. Hopefully, the lights will come back on. It is the Festival of Lights. It is the lighting of many lights. Maybe that's something to think about. So I'd like to talk today about uh, turning the lights back on and then perhaps uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, the darkness. And then, of course, uh, maybe uh, we can have what I call a little bit of a Michelangelo effect in the world today. So if you've got about 15, 20 minutes to uh, perhaps have some interesting ideas and some new and changing ideas, I would be grateful for the opportunity to uh, hear back from you. That's what the program is attempting to do today, and it begins right now. Okay, here we go. Uh, I've been producing a number of the last four or five programs, and we'll do it again, uh, The Blast from the Past. What I did is went back and found a number of the, um, of the hundreds, maybe thousands, I don't know, videos and radio programs that I've done, particularly in the past three or four years, and uh, some of them have what we call an evergreen effect. They're still helpful and useful. And I've been sharing them, and I hope uh, both through audio and through video, because what is changing is the podcasting business is more and more becoming not only the audio, which I love, because, of course, I have a face made for radio, uh, but also the video, which uh, I also have found uh, a niche in, or at least uh, an opportunity, even though I have, like I said, uh, if you're looking for a pretty face... <laughs> I'm not your one. Hey, um, what struck me is uh, an ad asking for money on this, uh, you know, Giving Tuesday from an organization which I've just come to know a little bit more about, uh, and they call themselves uh, the Imaginative Conservative. And, of course, the, they're putting together, and it's very much of a spirit, religious-based uh, uh, flowing out of a, a Catholic uh, seminary experience about, uh, yes, you can be a conservative, but that doesn't mean that uh, you aren't imaginative and uh, full of new ideas and perhaps uh, finding ways to express uh, good old ideas in new and powerful ways. And there was a, an ancient picture, and it was uh, the man who is lighting the lamps, you know, the proverbial job that Technology took away because uh, in times past, uh, there were lamplights, just like there are now, street lights, except they didn't have electricity. Uh, they had perhaps uh, some, some gas, and uh, in effect, uh, that had to be turned on, and then if turn it on, and then someone had to light it, and then it would shine through the night, and then, of course, somebody would have to come along in the morning and uh, turn it back off. And so there's that wonderful picture, an old-fashioned, almost Courier and Ives painting of the lamplighter. Hey, you know, I think that's a good image for us. Uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about that when this war broke out uh, and... Uh, it's continuing to go badly in many, many ways. Uh, who knows? As I say, uh, uh, you have effectively uh, the new Nazis, and uh, they're getting many of their ways. Yes, the new Nazis. They are, and we can talk about that if you wish. But uh, in effect, what we have is a situation where, uh, as one gentleman said, Edward Gray, in 1914, when the war was coming, he said, uh, the lights are going out all over Europe, and I'm afraid we will not see them again in our lifetime. And these are some dark and sometimes cold and uh, scary times. And so maybe that ancient image of uh, what lamps are you lighting? 
how are you trying to lighten things and uh, brighten things? We talked about Bright Friday, not Black Friday, Bright Friday. How can we uh, brighten things up, both in uh, who we are, what we say, and what we do? Um, can we truly be the lamp lighters? Well, that's just a challenge that I'm trying to put into my own life right now as I do my program and create new projects. And we're doing that, creating some new projects. And by the way, what also happened is my uh, copy of Smithsonian Magazine. Now, I don't really read magazines much anymore. I, uh, I used to, but uh, right now, of course, the Internet has made it hard for magazines to survive. But I, I do work with... Uh, True West magazine, and I love that. And uh, I found that uh, the Smithsonian, though I can get most of the things online, it just has that effect that I, I like the touch and feel of an old-fashioned real magazine. And here's what it said on the one that came today. Move over, Michelangelo. Can a robot replace the world's greatest artists. Now, as some of you may know, one of the projects that I've got one of my colleagues in India working on is uh, how to uh, deal with artificial intelligence. And we're going to kind of rename it, perhaps, maybe automatic intelligence, uh, but it's not human, it's something else. Uh, how can we better understand what it is and how can we keep it from doing bad things which it will tend to do and perhaps how can we use it in a positive way and where is it being overhyped and what might be some of the true possibilities so uh, I'm uh, eager to read can a robot replace the world's greatest artist and the answer is no <laughs> it can't but I'd like to uh, find out how they get there. I think they'll get there. Maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe they believe they can. But uh, let's see where that's going to lead us. So uh, if that's one of your curiosities, uh, maybe you want to check that out. Smithsonian, for December, move over Michelangelo. Can a robot replace the world's greatest artist? One of the uh, little lessons I have uh, attempted to put together uh, is uh, what I call the uh, Michelangelo Project. And uh, that is a way to encourage people of my age and stage. And uh, someone says, well, what age and stage are you? I said, well, first of all, I'm relatively old, at least in uh, human terms. In uh, terms of, I think, mind, spirit, I'm really quite young because I'm totally creating new things all the time. And uh, the whole idea behind the Michelangelo Project is to encourage people on this basis. It's been said that Michelangelo, the great artist, actually created some of his greatest work between the ages of 75 and 89. Did you know that? Surprising. And part of the problem is that sometimes it's hard to know if it was a real Michelangelo because during that time he's also uh, apprenticing. Remember the apprentice idea? Something we should totally bring back. Donald Trump was right. We need to teach people. We need to apprentice people. And uh, some of the students became so good that uh, uh, maybe somebody wouldn't even be able to know the difference between uh, the master and perhaps the uh, prodigy or the student or the protege uh, that uh, Michelangelo might have been working with. So my challenge to me and for you is you might make it to 75 and to 89. What will be your encore? What will be your Michelangelo project? Think about that. And some of the saddest stories that I know of 
are people who did have that opportunity to live that long, but it really didn't go very well. They had planned to retire and play golf, and perhaps not much more than that, and as a result of both health issues and uh, no aspirational issues, life kind of got a little bit sour and uh, a little bit sadder and uh, a little bit uh, smaller as they were in their, uh, quote, senior years. And we don't want that to happen to you. So think about that. Hey, this is Stan Houston with a couple of interesting ideas. Uh, hopefully that might have been a challenge to you. We're here to help you. We have a number of projects that we're putting together. And um, one of the key ones is uh, helping you be on the radio. And uh, we'll have a blast from the past coming up on uh, probably Thursday about that. But uh, we'll just let it sit there for the time being. However, uh, we do have one more thing to say on this uh, Tuesday. And so uh, why don't you just hang on and we'll try and uh, challenge you in one other way. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas. And uh, we're going to create a new logo. And I'm going to ask you, what are you going to create as you come to the uh, threshold of 24? It's a leap year. What are you going to leap into? Hey, I'll be right back. Here we go. And uh, like I said, um, Wherever you are in life right now, what can you do to lighten up <laughs> in the midst of the darkness? What can you do um, that uh, you can be lighter and brighter and be a little bit of a lamp lighter in the midst of the, the dark times? What can you do? Um, also, uh, it's hard to believe the amount of the atrocities that are taking place uh, in the world today. And some people have actually said, and I tend to agree, that uh, we have uh, some uh, Nazi tendencies, particularly among some of the uh, elements in supposedly the uh, Palestinian movement. Hamas very much uh, took a lot of their stuff from the very fabric of Nazi strategy. The whole idea of... Uh, terrible shooting, killing Jews, of, uh, in effect, holding hostages. Um, what they do is very, very similar to how the Nazis and the Gestapo and those rogues and thugs dominated Europe throughout the Second World War. And, of course, uh, the thing that uh, they did besides going to war is uh, they spent an incredible amount of time just killing millions of Jews during the war. And, of course, <clears throat> that uh, anti-Semitism, that uh, killing Jews uh, mania continues, and it truly is that. And uh, I, of course, totally, totally hate that. Hate that. And... Uh, I've oftentimes thought of myself very much of a kindred spirit to my Jewish friends. I've talked about that before, but I mentioned that. But now, what are you going to do to perhaps create something new? Think about that. Um, you don't want any more presents. Don't ask, you know, tell people not to give you anything. You don't want any presents. Uh, the only present you might want is if they, if they make something by hand, if, they, if they're handiwork, uh, you, you'd like maybe a small handy present, handwork present. One of the things we loved about our time in, uh, in Holland, the Netherlands, many years ago is that 
on uh, the the November on December fifth or the feast of Saint Nicholas that oftentimes people gave gifts on St. Nicholas. And actually, Christmas was not a gift-giving time. It basically was uh, the St. Nicholas time. But the point was that uh, it wasn't to be a flood of gifts. It was to be uh, something special. Oftentimes, uh, the best St. Nicholas gift was one that you had made yourself uh, to give to that special person. And we love that tradition, and um, we, we, we still try and follow that so that uh, we've kind of declared that none of us that we know really needs anything brand new. <laughs> so why don't we uh, save our money and actually just create something new and pleasant for other people and perhaps uh, just do something simple and uh, handful and useful for those we truly care about. So, but uh, moving forward, what are some of the things that you want to create? Something new, something different, something unique, something that uh, will be very much you, and uh, it may bring a little light and joy and uh, happiness into the world. What if every day we get up and say, how can I create something new and useful and uh, practical? Uh, maybe even a, a relationship or a friendship or an action. How can I do something today that will create a little more light, happiness, and utility, helpful, useful in the world today? You do that every day. The clock says 16 minutes, and that means I have to be quiet because uh, we don't go much more than 20, and we're going to quit now. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas. Reach out to me at stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. We will be right back with a request. Interesting Ideas just for you. This may be something you will be interested in. How many of you have, uh, well, of course, I know many of you, have heard of Dale Carnegie and, of course, his famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Well, that was done almost 80 plus years ago, and it's still a bestseller, but uh, uh, a few years ago, I started a project to adapt it. Now, not try and do a new version or a revision, but just an adaptation, a modern adaptation. See, that was created back in the 1930s, and the, the world, and particularly the media and the workplace, has changed a great deal. But most of the things Dale said... <laughs> are evergreen. Uh, they're even more true today and probably even more useful today than they were when he wrote them. He, he was he was an old-fashioned gentleman, and uh, we certainly need more old-fashioned gentlemen in the world today. And so we would like to adapt that. And uh, I'm looking for some people who might want to join me in that project. We've got the outline ready to go. But uh, it could be a new book, it could be a new program, it could be very useful and creative, and it could be profitable. You might even make some money on it. But that doesn't matter. If it's good, it'll do something that will bring good income. Because income is more than money. Always remember that. So if you think you might want to be a part of the, uh, what we call making good friends, or uh, what we are now going to call it the Impact Project. The Impact Project. Why don't you let me know? Uh, again, stanhouston at gmail.com. stanhouston at gmail.com. Best and blessings to you. We'll be back on Thursday with a blast from the past. And I'm going to say, it's time. It's time to be, be what I'm being. To be on the radio. Take care. Bye for now.